Good evening and welcome to the Cathedral of St. Patrick and St. Phelan here in Cavan Town. This evening I am honoured and privileged to be in conversation with Bishop Martin Hayes, the newly ordained Bishop of the Diocese of Kilmore. Bishop Martin was ordained on the 20th of September last. Welcome Bishop Martin. Thanks very much Anya. How did a, a, a Tipperary man like you end up in the Diocese of Kilmore? The big diocese of Kilmore, I should say. Well, some would say, if I can start maybe on, on a humorous note, that I came here to ensure that Kevin won the Ulster Championship. He did um, well. Well, I did well because my own county, Tipperary, won the Munster Championship for the first time in 85 years. However, just to, I suppose, to, to get to the root of your question, um, Anya, uh, I'm from Tipperary. I'm from a farming background. I went to school locally in my own parish, in a school, Littleton, in the parish of McCarkey Burris. I went to secondary school then in the local town in Thurlis. After that then I went to college in Limerick in what was then called NIHE, now called UL. And I studied production engineering there. But during the time in which I was a student there, I became involved in a youth faith movement called Muintres Isa, meaning Friendship in Jesus. And it was focused upon three different fires. It kept three different fires burning, Falcha, Fowlem and Gwee. Welcome learning and prayer. Another way we used to describe it was the four C's, Cordus, Kultur, Credif, August, Crack. Cordus, friendship, Kultur, culture, Credif, faith, and Crack, C-R-A-I-C, fun. I became involved in that and um, it awakened in me, I suppose, the beginnings of a calling to priesthood. I never thought it would at the time, but I managed eventually to finish my course in, in uh, Limerick. Uh, I, was, I finished at about 22, 23, I think it was, I've forgotten now exactly. Um, and then I knew this notion of vocation was there, but I decided to go, once I qualified, to go working. So I worked in Dublin in um, a computer um, company, mainframe computer company by the name of Amdal and Swords in Dublin. I worked with them for a couple of years, uh, worked in the States with them and whatever as well. But then at the end of the two years, I decided I needed to try out my, my um, this, I suppose, what I would describe as an aching. Um, it was something that wouldn't go away. So I decided to try it and I um, then began studying for the priesthood back in the town that I went to secondary school in, in Thurlis, so I'd, got, I'd come full circle. So I spent six years there, was ordained in 89, spent two years in Rome doing further studies in philosophy, and then came back to the seminary again to teach philosophy and uh, took on some other responsibilities in the area of marriage care and uh, bursar for the college. Um, after 10 years there, uh, I then moved to parish, again to Thurlis, and I spent 15 years in all in Turles in parish ministry. And uh, then my last three years, I was involved in my diocese in the whole area of pastoral planning. Um, and that meant that I was out of parish work, but had responsibility for developing a parish pastoral, uh, sorry, a diocesan pastoral plan for the diocese of Cashin and Limley, which was my native diocese. And then last April, I got a phone call from the papal nuncio um, asking, uh, me, you know, to become the Bishop of Kilmore. Had you any idea, did you think about being a bishop? Had you any idea or did you feel that's coming to me? Way, no, no, I, uh, uh, no, it isn't the thing that, 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 you, that I ever thought would happen to me. Um, people obviously would talk about these things, you know, and that, but never, I didn't ever think that I would be worthy uh, to be a bishop. Uh, I didn't ever, that didn't ever, I, I, I was amazed and overawed, and I'm still, I suppose, in awe of that fact. Were that, you scared? Yes, I was, I was apprehensive as well. And part of my apprehension at the time was the fact that I was coming so far from home. I've often said to people here that um, a clone from home is far away, but Cavan and Leitrim and parts of Sligo and Fermanagh and Meath that are included in this diocese are much further away. So, um, I, I was uh, somewhat, um, I suppose, you know, um, I won't say taken aback, but somewhat surprised that I was going to be going so far. Um, now, I, I came here and I was announced on the 29th of June last, and I got a great welcome. 
Now, it also was the first day in which the churches were being reopened uh, after the restrictions for COVID from, from beforehand. So there was a great rejoicing at that. And so it, it, was, it was a good day to be here and it was great to get the welcome. And uh, since then, I have felt very welcome. Um, I'm living here in Cavan uh, and I felt very welcome. And people are people. Uh, they're the same as in Tipperary Cavan, you know, and as I mentioned at the beginning, we, we had that double joy of being provincial champions um, in, in the football this champions. year. So, Ulster and Munster, yeah. So, anyway. song, it's a, it's a long way to Tipperary, so mm -hmm. you are, in effect, uh, a long way from home and from your family. Mm -hmm. Do you miss them? Oh, I would, yes, yeah, I would most definitely. Yeah. Um, and in particular, over the last number of, of weeks and months when the, the, there was a, a, pro a prohibition upon travelling from county to county. So I wasn't able to get home. Who have you got in the family? I have, I have six brothers and sisters. Um, so uh, they're all based in Ireland. They weren't up to recently, but they're in places like Port Arlington, Cork, Clare, um, and, and, and home in Tipperary, yes. Mm. So as we're saying, and as you mentioned there, um, we mentioned earlier on, uh, COVID, the year of COVID, uh, mm -hmm. COVID-19, it started back in February of this year. We've, we've, we've come through a dark year. It's been mm -hmm. uh, a scary year. We've, ha we've had to sit back and take set of our lives, of our lifestyle, and we have to look after the vulnerable. Um, a lot of people have had to change their lifestyles. We've had, we've all, mm -hmm. every man, mm -hmm. woman and child is at mm -hmm. risk from this. And we've all had to change our lifestyles. Um, but you know, even more so in this time. How do you see the role of the, of the clergy in this and the mm -hmm. clergy's role changing? Well, I suppose, first of all, it, it's been a real challenge for the clergy, um, as it is for people as well. Um, but as you asked the question about the clergy, you know, one of the things that was significant for me during the early part of the COVID in springtime was that um, all people over 70 were to cocoon. And uh, the reality for me down in Cash and Lemley, and I'm sure, and, and here in Kilmore and other dioceses, was that many of the clergy were over 70 and they were caused to cocoon. So one of the things that occurred to me straight away is that this COVID, it's challenging the church um, at this time. And it's, it's causing us to look five, 10 years into the future when, you know, you may have maybe 50 priests in a diocese or maybe 100 priests in a diocese and maybe one third of them, or maybe more, are over 70. So it puts you in a position of where the church would be with regard to clergy numbers 10 years in, 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 into the future. So it has us realize, well, how many priests are actually, actually available to minister. But the changing role of the priest, of the pastor, of the priest, how do you see that? Well, the changing role, I suppose, um, is, is, is I, I see the role of the priest as facilitator. I suppose up to now that the role of the priest has always been, you know, as a manager, um, as being in charge, you know, but, but I would see church in the future, a, a, a church um, which is guided by the principle of what they call co-responsibility, or where people and priests work together, okay? And where the priest then as a facilitator, bringing the best out of people, recognizing their gifts and bringing the best out of them. And an example of that, for example, in these COVID times is that no priest on his own can manage on his own and prepare a church and keep it safe for people coming in. So he needs a group of volunteers. Now, that's one sense in which people can be involved. The other sense in which people can be involved is, is on, on their parish pastor councils, as is happening in this diocese, but that they can have an input into the governance of a parish and into what happens in a parish and how it... Um, meets the needs of people and how it recognizes the gifts of others and brings them, uh, brings them into play. Okay, but the Catholic Church, as well as many other churches, have had to literally close their doors mm -hmm. and say, stay at home. You can't come to our churches. You can't gather in a mm -hmm. crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but the, I feel sometimes looking at it and saying, like, like, that's, that was pushing faith way down the line in terms of, of like it didn't matter about you missing your faith once you keep safe. Uh, it was pushing all that, uh, our good faith all aside really. Mm -hmm. Did you feel that? And the, the fact that churches are, are vast, look at the fantastic cathedral we have here in this town, are big and they can cope with, with a reasonable crowd, socially distant. Mm -hmm. But no, it's not been allowed. It's like, no, mm -hmm. uh, no. Well, well, 
What do you think? You must feel that sense of you're very far down, down the line of no, no, essential, no. I, 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 don't, I, I don't actually sh share that sentiment. I, I, I think that one of the key things is that we have to be safe. And uh, one of the things that the, 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 that the church was able to organize in conjunction with the state with regard to public health regulations was that they could have 50 in small churches. But then in big churches like this in a cathedral, they could allow for pods of 50. So you could have more. And um, the, the key thing then was that people would be at a distance from each other and that people wear masks and that they use the sanitization. Um, while um, people, some people may be upset that public worship wasn't allowed, I think the priority is public safety. And one of the challenges that the church has risen to is that um, uh, people can use webcams and uh, uh, that was my next question. Yeah, we were, yeah. we're going to talk about uh, church now has gone very with it, up there with it, and going mm. online. And um, that has become the new norm. But you see, you see a little change in that, and you actually think it's of benefit. Yeah, well, uh, obviously, the, the, the challenge of the church was to go online, and it has been good. And I know myself when I was back in, in Cash and Lemley during the early part of the COVID. Um, we, th there was a webcam put into the parish that I was living in and also there was a radio link and it meant for me that I was being challenged then every day to celebrate a liturgy and to reflect upon the Word of God. Now usually at daily Mass there would be no homily but one of the things that was important then because people couldn't be there and because they were now focused on listening to the Word of God in the readings and, and hoping for a reflection on it in light of what was going on, it challenged me to reflect upon the readings and to prepare a homily each day rather than just doing it on a Sunday. So that was a good thing for me because it challenged me to do that. And it meant as well that people were now focused upon the Word of God. Uh, very often there's a Catholic tradition that we, we focus upon... Um, other aspects of the Mass aside from the Word of God and maybe we don't focus on Scripture as much but for me it meant that people could focus upon the Word of God and they were focusing upon the Word of God from their own homes and perhaps they were engaging and I know some people were talking to each other then about the Word of God and about their faith. And they felt safe as well. Mm -hmm. um, but going online if it became the new norm mm. Uh, who needs a church to come to anyone? I, 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 agree, I, I agree with what you're saying. Like, the ideal, obviously, is that we gather. You know, that, that's, that's the ultimate. And I suppose one of the things that COVID and all these restrictions have taught us is we now appreciate what we had. Being able to gather in a church with our own local community and celebrate. Um, very often we came there and have come there as individuals and walked out. Now we know our dependence and, uh, and, and and we know the needs and the vulnerability of others and we're more, we're more in touch with, with, with ourselves and with the needs of others and perhaps when we do come back and when it is safe to do so we will celebrate and we will have so we will have I think we'll come back with a renewed sense of our faith because we've had to search and we've had to struggle okay. hmm. but this has been the year of COVID. This has been the year of COVID and the dreadful year that it has. Um, it's had, it's been a big financial hit on churches, yes. uh, Jews and offerings. And, mm. um, and also we'll talk about ch um, charities that are out there mm. helping mm. people like St. Vincent de Paul and are helping people out at this time of the year mm. have not been able to raise funds. Mm. Now, could the church sustain much more of that? Yeah. I, I, I agree on you that it has been a difficult year. Um, for you have to heat the church, you yeah. have to light it for the few people that do mm -hmm. come, mm -hmm. you have to pay the insurance, like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. How, yeah. how will the church, if this goes on for another while, how will the church, how will the church in general sustain itself? Well, it, it'll, have to, it'll have to change and adapt, but it, it, as of yet we don't know the full impact, the full financial impact. Um, now, people have been very good. People recognize, who, who are used to paying their dues, have recognized that, that, that at the very point that you're making, that the struggle is there and that, people, that churches and parishes may be struggling, and they have been very generous. Overall, though, the income is down, and we will only know that fully when we move into next year, when we look back at 2020. 
with regard to charities and speaking to the Vincent de Paul here locally, um, they have said that they're, they're, they're pleasantly um, surprised by the number of donations, that people have recognized that there are other people suffering yeah. and that they have given, uh, even though they haven't been able to have their usual collection at Christmas it, it, using it at the church gates or wherever, and they have been pleasantly surprised that people are contributing. Well, maybe aware. St. Vincent's, I just used St. Vincent de Paul as, as an example there, but I'm talking about like Daffodil Day mm -hmm. and all the other fl sure, yeah, flag yeah, days yeah, and yeah. the badge days and stuff. They yeah. have not been able to get out Correct, yeah. and shake their buckets and, mm -hmm. you know, everything like that has been mm -hmm. cancelled. So they will be, maybe mm -hmm. in a year's time, yeah. feel, feel sure, the, yeah. diff the, the, the mm -hmm. loss of that. Mm -hmm. To get back to talking about life one more time, um, I was just driving the car here to, to the cathedral this evening and I saw the people out doing their shopping and merely making the best of the circumstances that we find in, that we find ourselves in. And one thing, and you've alluded to it already, is I found, as, as I noticed it in conversation with a lot of people, that people are saying, this is, it's back to basics. Uh, we're much more appreciative of, appreciated of, of things. We're appreciative that we're in good health. Before this, we took it for granted, possibly. Mm. We're, we're, we're glad of the times now that we can visit. We appreciate visiting people, visiting our older people that when we, we were able to do, we say, isn't it great to be able to do that? Before that, we might not even have done it, but mm. now it's a back to basics. Do you feel maybe this Christmas is a lesson in back to basics? Yeah, it's a, like we've been through a hard year and uh, we now appreciate all the more others. Like in, for example, myself, you know, very often I'd be very busy in the normal run of things last year. And you meet people and your friends and family and whatever, and you have a quick conversation and you run on. Or you might meet someone in a street and you just have a short. Now I appreciate like that the importance of being able to sit with them, not necessarily sit with them, but stand with them maybe and, and listen. You know, that, 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 that for me, you know, is, is um, I, I've become a lot more appreciative of that. And, um, and also in the main, because I've been restricted myself, I had, I had a great plan in this diocese uh, of um, getting out to three parishes um, each week between October and Christmas. Of course, it never happened, you know. And um, so I, I, I'm well aware, that, and I'm well aware as well, that people are really struggling. Um, I just had a letter the other day from some young people and, you know, and, and they were saying that they're really struggling at this time and they're looking for a light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, right, how can you as clergy and, and all our wonderful priests and everybody else that's in the church, how can you extend a hand and say, right, this is what we can do for you now. We can't have you in the doors of the church, but we can do this. How do you see, you know, priests, priests on the ground doing that? Well, I, again, I, I come back to, I come back to, it's, it's about priests facilitating people, you know. It's, it's not just the priests on their own, yet the priests can, and, and using a medium like this, for example, and, and thanks very much for the opportunity, you know, using, for example, I did an interview there with our youth director, Francis Keeney, um, uh, via YouTube, and it was picked up right throughout the country. And um, so we can use uh, social media, um, you, you know, to get our message out, you know, and, and, and it's a matter, I suppose, of getting comfortable with a new technology. Um, so th that's one to be seen to be helping the people as well with your words of comfort, because we mm. don't want to see the church doors closed. We want to feel that, you know, you're there, even though the doors are closed. Yeah. And, and one of the very simple things, I think, uh, is a phone call. You know, uh, some priests I know they're using text, some are using um, email. But very often it's a matter of making contact with their people in their parishes with a phone call. So anybody out there listening, so they should not be afraid if they feel a need to talk to their, their, their pastor, Absolutely their not. And, that's, and, and, and priests would be only delighted mm -hmm. if they rang them. No feel they're bothering them in any way? Not just at all. Contact. Not at all. Um, in fact, yeah, I'm always, and in my previous ministry, in parish ministry, you know, and thrilled to bits when people ring. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, if everyone rings at the same time, you can't, you know, obviously, but, but, um, but yeah, that, 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 that's important that, um, that we're available and that we're there. And um, maybe we too, as priests, and uh, we've had time now to slow down, to reflect, uh, to pray, and, and to get in touch again with the scriptures, because very often with less priests in, in, and with bigger parishes, busy, uh, yeah. you can be too busy. 
you know. So we've all had to slow down and had to reflect. And um, as I mentioned earlier, like uh, Christmas was never more needed, you know, in order to slow down. And the whole story of Christmas, you know, uh, the light at this time in the middle of the darkness is, is, is key, you know, um, is a message of hope for us all. Well, thank you, Department. Yeah. Um, I do believe you have got a message and a blessing for all our folk out there. Mm -hmm. After a, a long year, a long tough year, 2020, I think Christmas is never more needed. And I'll just read the first verse of the first reading which will be used here in this cathedral on Christmas Eve night uh, for our Midnight Mass. And the line from Scripture goes as follows. The people that walked in darkness has seen a great light. On those who live in a land of deep shadow, a light has shone. Now I think that that verse was, that is very pertinent to what we've been through over the past year uh, with COVID, with all the fear around a rapidly spreading disease and the frustration perhaps maybe with restrictions with the fears in particular of those who feel um, vulnerable and maybe more susceptible to catching COVID-19. It means that we are more aware of all those who are vulnerable. And at Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus, the birth of a little child, a helpless little child, a vulnerable child, God has come among us as a little baby, vulnerable. And so it means that we are called to recognize the vulnerability of God and acknowledge our own vulnerability. And so I pray this evening that we may be vulnerable ourselves, and that we may look out and therefore be able to care for those who are most vulnerable at this time. We pray for healing. We pray for calm in the midst of anxiety. We pray also that we, in feeling our own frailty and vulnerability, we may know the joy of the vulnerability of God being with us and being close to us, and so helping us through these difficult times. Thank you for watching News and Views this evening. I'd like to say once again that we are honoured and most grateful to Bishop Martin Hayes for joining us in conversation this evening. I'd like to say thank you to all the people, all the folk at home and abroad that watch us all through the year. And I'd like to say Happy Christmas and please do stay safe.